Hey, how's it going guys? Today I'm going to show you how to replace brake pads and rotors in your car. Replacing brakes in a car is a very easy job and you can easily do it by yourself at home using nothing but very few tools. Now, if you didn't see my last video on brakes, where I explained the top 5 reasons why your brakes make noise and why you should never use poor quality brake pads, the link to that video is in the description so be sure to check it out because you'll get a better understanding on your car's brake system. But in today's video, I'm replacing these worn out brake pads and rotors with these brand new ones. Now, how do you know if your brakes are worn out and need replacing? Well, I guess it is time to go back to the basics. In your car, the brake rotor is attached to something called wheel hub. So as you drive the car, this rotor is also spinning along with the wheel. Then you have the brake caliper assembly, which includes the caliper bracket, which is where the brake pads get installed, and the actual caliper, which has a hydraulic piston inside. So as you apply the brakes, this piston squeezes the brake pads against the rotor. This creates a lot of friction and that's how your car slows down. So every time you press the brakes, these brake pads and the rotor contact each other so they both get worn out over the time. To see if the brake pads are worn out, all you need is a good visual inspection. Every brake pad has a common fundamental design that is this backing plate and on top of the backing plate there's a friction material, which has to be at least the thickness of a dollar coin. Because the thickness of a dollar coin is 2.5 mm, which is close to the minimum thickness of 2 mm for most brake pads. So you want to look through the rim to see how much friction material left on the brake pad. And as you can see, this brake pad is fine. Now if you can't see your brake pads through the wheel, then you have to take off the wheel. So break the lug bolts loose and jack up the car. Then use a pair of jack stands underneath the car so the car is safely supported by jack stands. Then remove the wheel and now we can clearly see the brake pads. And as you can see, these brake pads are almost worn down to the backing plate. Another way to check your brake pads is to use the brake pad thickness gauge. You can see in this gauge we have 12mm on top, which is the thickness of a brand new brake pad. So from 12mm to 6mm, it is green, meaning it is safe. From 6mm to 3mm, it is yellow, means it is the ideal time to replace the brake pads and any less than 3mm, it is red. Means now your brake pads are worn out, so you definitely want to replace them before it's too late. Now some cars have brake pad wear sensors, so if you're getting a message on your dashboard for brake pads, or your brake pads warning light is on, that also means your brake pads are worn out. So that's how you tell if the brake pads are worn out. What about the brake rotors? Well even for the brake rotors, there's a minimum thickness, which you can find on the center of the rotor, or on the edge of the rotor or you can find them in service manuals. So all you have to do is to get a vernier caliper and measure the thickness. If you find the thickness to be lower than the specs, then you have to replace it. Now even if your rotors are not worn out, you still have to check the rotors for any run out, especially if your brake pedal feels pulsating as you press the brakes. For this you need something called a dial indicator. You want to set up the dial indicator and spin the rotor to see if the rotor has any run out. But I know most people don't have these tools, so I'm not going to show you how to do that. Alright, now you know how to tell if your car's brakes have worn out. So let's see how to replace them. First, you want to go behind the brake caliper and remove the two bolts that hold the caliper in place. Here's the bottom one. For the top one, you want to crack the bolt loose just like that so you can open up the caliper. Now, if you're only replacing the brake pads, you can simply pry out the old brake pads and install the new brake pads in. It is that simple. But since I'm replacing the rotors, this caliper bracket need to come out. So you have to remove the top bolt as well and then take the caliper out of the way. Now, you don't want to let the caliper hang by the brake hose because it can damage the brake hose. Instead, you can rest it on the suspension. Or you can use a bungee cord like this to hang it up. Then you want to go behind the caliper bracket and remove the two bolts that hold the caliper bracket in place. Now, these bolts could be on there pretty tight, so use a breaker bar if you want. Once you're done, you can take off the caliper bracket. Now, if you are lucky, the rotor will come out very easily. But if the rotor is thrusted to the hub, which they usually do, you can use one of your caliper bolts to screw into the rotor. So you can get it to loose just like that. If that didn't work, then you're gonna have to hit the rotor head with a large hammer. Or you can use a blowtorch to heat up the rotor head, so it should come right out. Now before you install the new rotors, you want to spray down some brake cleaner to clean off any oil or grease on the rotor, which is usually applied by the manufacturer to stop the rotor from rusting inside the packaging. Also if your wheel hub is rusty, you can use a wire brush, clean the surface, 
and apply some brake grease to the hub to prevent any future rusting. And now you can install the new rotor. Then you can install the caliper bracket and the bracket bolts. And these two bolts get torqued down to 107 Newton meters. That's the top one. And that's the bottom one. Alrighty, now it is time to replace the old brake hardware. So you want to pry them out, clean off any dust, and install the new brake hardware. That is one, and that's the other. Now, before you install the new brake pads, you want to apply some lubricant on the brake pad ears. You also need to lubricate the guide pins as well. This helps the brake pad to slide in and out easily as you apply the brakes. Different manufacturers use different lubricants to lubricate the brakes. So the correct lubricant you should use in your brakes is mentioned in service manuals. For example, Toyota recommends using synthetic brake caliper grease for the brake pads, which is a silicon based synthetic lubricant, and lithium based glycol grease for the guide pins, which is a rubber grease lubricant. So every time I do a brake job, I always use a silicon based synthetic brake lubricant to lubricate the brakes, because they don't get washed out as easily as other traditional lubricants like copper indices. They can withstand extreme temperatures for much longer. They can withstand higher pressures than copper anises before they get squeezed out. So you can apply some lubricant on the brake pad ears. And also on the back side of the brake pad if your brake pads have steel and squeak shims. This will help reducing any brake noise. If your brake pads come with multiple anti squeak shims like this, then you wanna apply some lubricant in between each of them. Most brake pads come with something called way indicators. These steel clips right here, this is your way indicators. Now when you install the new brake pads, you wanna install the brake pad with the way indicator to the inboard side, because the inboard side has direct contact with the brake caliper piston. So the inboard side usually has more way on it than the outboard side. Now even on the inboard side, you wanna find something called a leading edge, which is the point where the brake rotor initially contact the brake pad. So if the caliper is front facing, then the leading edge is at the top. If the caliper is rear facing, then the leading edge is at the bottom. Here goes the outboard side. And the brake pads are done. With the brake pads installed, now it is time to lubricate the guide pins. So pull out the guide pins. Clean off any old grease with the paper towel. And apply some lubricant. Then reinstall the guide pins. And now you can reinstall the caliper. Now my brake pads came with two new bolts for the guide pins with pre-applied thread locker on them. But if you are reusing the old ones, make sure you add some thread locker to the end of the bolts so they wouldn't back out as you drive. Then install the top bolt. And now you're gonna have to push this caliper piston in. The reason is you wanna make enough clearance for the new brake pads which are thicker than the worn out ones. The easiest way to do this is to get a brake piston compressor tool like this. First, you want to clean off any dirt around the rubber boot, then grab one of your old brake pads, put it in front of the piston, and turn it all the way in until the piston goes back into the bow. Just like that. Now some brake calipers may have two pistons instead of one. So you have to push both pistons in if you have two piston caliper. Now when you are doing this, you are pushing the brake fluid inside the caliper piston up the brake line, through the ABS modulator, if you have any ABS, and into the reservoir. So if the brake fluid start to overflow, you can use a turkey baster to suck some of that fluid out. And make sure you don't let any of that brake fluid drip onto the car's paint, because it'll eat up the paint. Also if you're doing this in a very old car, it is a good idea to open the bleeder valve behind the caliper, so you're not pushing any dirty fluid into the ABS modulator. So once you're done, you can close the caliper, and install the bottom bolt, and these two bolts get torqued down to 37 Newton meters. Then you can put the tire on and tighten the wheel nuts evenly to 103 newton meters. Then do the same to the other side as well because brakes work in pairs. In this car I'm also going to replace the rear brakes as well. And the procedure is still the same as it was for the front. That is because I have a separate drum brake for the emergency brakes. But in some cars the rear brake caliper is shared by the emergency brakes. So if your car has this type of design then you won't be able to compress the caliper piston like you can do in the front brakes. Instead, you have to turn it in with a special tool. But rather than buying a brake service kit that comes with all the right fittings, you can buy a universal tool like this. 
you attach the tool to a regular ratchet and then you have to turn it until the piston bottoms out. Some cars may have other minor differences like having fixed calipers. Now unlike in floating calipers where the caliper slides in and out on guide pins, fixed calipers are fixed. So if your car has fixed calipers, first you have to remove the retaining clips so you can pull out the two pins out that hold the brake pads in place. Then squeeze the caliper piston with a pair of pliers, pull out the old brake pads, install the new brake pads in, put the pins back in, reinstall the clips and that is all there is to it. So once you're done, you want to start the car and press the brake pedal a few times before you start driving. The reason why you need to do this is to build up the pressure inside the caliper, which you lost by compressing the caliper piston. And now it is time to go for a test drive. During the test drive, you want to get the car up to 60 km an hour and slow down to around 20 km an hour. And you want to repeat this for about 8 to 10 times. This will help to break in the new brake pads with the new rotor. And now the moment you all been waiting for. Oh yes, that is 110 km an hour to a dead stop in 3.5 seconds. And that's how you properly install brake pads and rotors in your car. As always, if you like this video, press a like button. We have a lot more videos coming up just like this. So be sure to hit that subscribe button. All the tools I have used in this video are linked in the description and also in the next one.